Hi everyone. Okay, so here is the review of The Shy, Season 3, Episode 7. And baby, this was a good one. Okay, the show starts off with Ronnie giving his grandma a memorial toast at a bar. So he put, he drinking. Cause you know he a little alcoholic. And um, uh, you know his friends in there they like they don't like memorial service. Cause remember she didn't want a memorial service. Then Jada's there. Cause remember Jada used to work for for her and she gave Jada all that money when Jada got fired. And Jada was telling him he needs to stop drinking. So after Jada, you know, got on him, he went and, you know, got him some coffee or whatever. Was drinking some coffee. So then we go to Jake. Jake and his feelings. So we see D Doo and uh Candy, his wife, they at the table for breakfast. Jake come in, he, he told him he don't wanna eat. So Jake giving him all his attitude, so when Jake left, Candy told him, she was like, you know he, he know you killed his brother. He know you killed Reggie. And so, you know, after um, Trig had told Jake, I guess Jake just been, you know, in his feelings or whatever after that. So then, we see uh, Jake and uh, Kevin at school. So they're in the hallway talking, you know, Kevin's little girlfriend, she looking at him. Jake telling him, man, forget her. You know, she put your business in the street <laughs> like they ground. Yeah, she put your business in the street, and it was funny. And I was like, what? So he was like, yeah, didn't try to bribe you with an iPad. But, he, you know, Kevin went outside, and she followed him. And so when they got to walk off, they ended up holding hands by some strange, for some strange reason. So when that happened, you know, they... They eventually, they made arrangements to have a little date. You know, he went to her house. Tell me why. Her daddy walked, came home. He's sitting on the bed with his book upside down. Like, you never look at the book not one time to realize it wasn't even turned the right side up. So then we see, um, I'm just going through the characters. His mama and Dre, kid mama and Dre, uh, Dre her wife, at the house. Why is Dre trying to pack up? Keisha only been gone two months trying to pack up Keisha's room. So they get into it. She tell her she need to get out. Yeah, and she told her, right, who are you to tell me how long to mourn my child? Because there's people that have been gone for years that's actually gone, and they stuff just like they left it. So she was out of line for that one. So, you know, Kevin's mom got mad to her to get out, this, that, and the third. It was just crazy. So then we see... um. Emmett and Lala, they talking a little real. He's some type of the realtor or the landlord or whatever at uh, Sonny's restaurant. They trying to take the restaurant from Sonny. She bring him a piece of cake, you know. He ate it after they left, so he actually ended up giving them like a catering job, you know, for them to show like what they can do. So they had the little catering job. So that was them. And then we're going to stick with Emmett. Okay, Jada came home with her little boyfriend, Emmett and Naisha, whatever his baby mom is, name is. They in the house. The house just tore up. She was embarrassed. Like, and she had a, Jada got a nice apartment, too. But they had her house jacked up. And then they had the nerd tell her they had to stay longer than what they anticipated because he not working. So she was mad about that. So then we go to, um, we go back to Ronnie. So Ronnie walked around door to door looking for Keisha. So he across the street from the house Keisha held hostage in. And he asked the lady, the lady sitting on the balcony. She first off she say, Ain't nobody gonna help you. And he was like, uh, huh? And she was like, Yeah, ain't nobody gonna help you. What, what you looking for? And he was like, I, I thought I heard somebody scream. The man across the street said that his wife heard some screaming coming from your your house, from over here where you at. He was like, she was like, that man kind of touched. He don't have no wife. So why she say that? Ronnie went over there and digging the trash. And so happened he find a crowbar. So he kicks the door in and go down there with Keisha at. And, you know, break out the locks out the door. Oh, prior to that, let me tell you, Keisha tried to escape. Before I get to that part, she tried to escape. It showed her, she laying in the bed with the man like the next morning. He's sleeping in the bed with her and everything. She get up, she still got the whole, she got the gym uniform on. 
So she break a, a leg off the chair and try to take the man with him. He come back in the room. He take it from him and they end up taking everything out the room. So she come playing suicide. So that happened earlier. I don't know if it was earlier that day or the day before, whatever. So we're going to go back to Ronnie. So Ronnie break the door down. He hollering, Keisha, Keisha, and she heard him. So she beat on the door. He he get the door open. As he get the door open, her captor pulls up. So he see his back door open. He run in there. So he bop Ronnie. It just, you know, Ronnie drunk and weak at the same time. It just knock him down. So once he does that, he done knocked the crowbar out of his hand. So Keisha jump all on the man back trying to get him off Ronnie. He sling her off him. So she see the crowbar. She grabs. She just start beating him down with it. Just beating him, beating him, beating him. So then the next thing you know, you see Keisha walk out the house. Y'all, I was hollering this whole episode, talking to the TV. You see Keisha walking out the house, looking around. Then next thing you know, you see um, the ambulance out there. And then you see Ronnie on the stretcher. Then Keisha on the stretcher. And then, yeah. So then you go back to Kevin. Because old girl daddy came in the room, you know, told him he need to talk to him. So they sitting downstairs. Kevin sitting there looking crazy. The man asked him, point blank, was you about to fuck my daughter? And Kevin looking like, he don't know what to say. And his phone rang. I guess it's his mama. Uh, somebody texts him telling him that they found Keisha. So he he run out of there. They all at the hospital. You know, they got her in the room or whatever. And she just looking like she's still in shock. So the mom... You know, they was already outside the first, so when they did go in the room, they all, the mama laid in the bed with her. You know, Kevin came, put his arm around her. You know, Dre, she was still trying to be hard. Later, we see her outside talking to one of the nurses, and the nurses saying they doing all the little rape kits and everything on her. She gonna need counseling. So when Dre do go back in the room, you know, her, they, all, they backs turned to her. She just busts out crying. You know, one of them silent cries when she don't want them to know she crying because she trying to be hard. But that was the shy. <clears throat> it ain't have a whole, whole, whole lot, but it it was just like what I said they need to do was to all them different um, scenarios going on and stick to Keisha and Jake. And, yeah, I'm trying to think. That's pretty, that was pretty much it. Cause that was, that was all I was. I wanted Keisha to get out that house, and as you can see, she gonna be messed up. Cause when she did get home, she didn't want her mama to touch her, and so when they left out the room, she grabbed the chair and put it under the door, and went sat on the side of her bed on the floor with some scissors in her hand, like if anybody coming there, she gonna stab them. So she got PTSD. So tell me what you think of the shot, and if there's anything that I forgot, but yeah, the shot was ooh, the shot was good. And I was so glad Keisha got out of there. Yeah. So, tell me what you think. Like this video and subscribe to my channel. And this is The Shy, Season 3, Episode 7. I think we got like two or three more episodes left.